week we're going to talk about S400 uh, air defense system and uh, how it might end up being the game changer for India. Now, the S400 uh, is uh, the air defense system which India is procuring from Russia. The deal has been done and the delivery is expected in the next uh, few Yes, so we are looking at a different timeline in the COVID-19 pandemic situation. As Russia has already said that there might be some delays due to this particular pandemic. So we'll look at all these situations in terms of delivery timeline, in terms of S-400's prowess, its features and how beneficial it will be to our defense forces. For more on this, we're joined by a distinguished panel of guests today. Let me first introduce them to you, beginning with Retired Lieutenant General B.K. Saxena is a distinguished uh, fellow with the uh, VIF. Uh, also, we have with us uh, Air Vice Marshal uh, P.K. Srivastava, our defense expert, and we're also joined by Ajay Banerjee, a defense correspondent from the Tribune, somebody who keeps a tab on all these developments. Let me begin with you, General Saxena, since you've been, uh, you know, with the, the Army's air defense. Let's bring S-400 in perspective here. Let's understand what exactly is this uh, air defense missile system. Okay, this uh, main question can be seen in three different parts. What is S-400? What was its need and how it has evolved over time? And how the system becomes a game changer? So let's take the first thing that S-400 is a long range air defense and anti-missile system. So by that definition, it can take on the enemy's air threat, which is prosecuted by <clears throat> fourth, fifth generation aircrafts, attack helicopters, cruise missiles, air uh, anti radiation missiles, firing all sorts of rockets, missiles, precision guided munitions, etc., etc. At the same time, it can take on the threat from enemy's ballistic missiles. We are aware that our Western neighbor, Pakistan, has got ballistic missiles of the ranges from 80 kilometers to 2950 kilometers, while China has got ballistic missiles starting from 550 kilometers to DF-41, 14,000 kilometers and capable of launching the multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles. That means multiple targets which can be independently targeted. Now, if this is the purpose of the system, what is the need of the system? How it has just evolved? That's what everybody is talking about. Okay, let's go back to the 60s and the 70s when the air threat, which I just talked about, used to be prosecuted by just two vehicles, aircrafts uh -huh. and helicopters. And that also, they were fair weather and they used to prosecute the air threat in the visual domain. So it was all right. And, and, and also, the number of vulnerable areas and points which were to be protected were also very finite. So it uh -huh. was all right if you used to put the guns all around it. And of course, the air defense by the aircrafts, you used to put the guns in single ring or multiple rings and it was fine to take on the fair weather threat. But what has happened in those five decades which have gone back, the air threat has grown exponentially. First of all, the air threat which was only aircrafts and helicopters have been joined by deadly multi-role aircraft, attack, uh, anti-radiation missiles, uh, cruise missiles and all sorts of munitions which are smart, intelligent, precision guided, beyond visual range, uh, and soft kill weapons. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the uh, ballistic missile threat has grown. So it, is, it has been realized that it is not possible to just protect this air threat from a simple ring of guns which you used to put. So experts realized over a period of time that to take on this air threat, we need to deploy multiple ring of weapons. Now, why this multiple ring idea has come out? The okay. requirement, operational requirement is to detect the threat as far as possible and punish it with successive weapons without any break seamlessly from the time it enters at the long range till the time it is destroyed. Now, how do you mm -hmm. do it? Every gun, every missile has got a finite range and finite altitude. You cannot have a, a missile deployed at Delhi to fire all the way to China. You have to have multiple ring of weapons deployed in a manner so that the firearm of the air defense weapon extends from the guns which are 4 to 5 kilometers, goes up to the very short range weapons 20 to 30 kilometers, goes up to medium range weapons up to 100 kilometers and long range weapons beyond 100 kilometers. Now okay. this okay. is the firearm. 
it was realized now it was realized that this firearm is all right but the threat is growing multi multi dimensional and also the threat is going in the ballistic missile in the surface to surface missile scenario in a great manner now this thought was going on in 2000 what happened the country decided to make a independent ballistic missile defense system to take on the ballistic missile you require a ballistic missile defense system which can detect mm-hmm. the incoming missile which can track it and which can fire missiles to destroy it now this was done in around 2000 we made a system we, we, we decided i in fact i am associated with a system we made program ad and which is now operational it has got two phases phase 1 2000 km it can take on ballistic missiles up to 2000 km and phase 2 it can take on ballistic missiles up to a range of 5000 km it was realized around 1450 it was said now even one of our program ad is falling in sufficient why the quantum of weapon which is there and secondly the range and the firearm required is much more so mm-hmm. it was in october november 2015 a lot of uh, news came out in the media that india is looking for a greater quantum of bell- anti ballistic uh, anti missile systems mm-hmm. if you remember december 15 prime minister modi visited russia and uh, there was a talk of s400 for the first time and on 17th december 2015 the defense acquisition council gave an acceptance of necessity for buying five regiments of s400 at the cost of 5.43 billion now what okay. is the trigger trigger as i was telling you is the to take on the threat which has developed over the period of time and basically ballistic missile threat which is developing from pakistan and china as also to augment the weapons of our own program ad ballistic missile defense which we are developing okay. so it was in december 15 that this happened in march 16 def expo happened in which s400 deal was uh, said the intergovernment agreement is taking place in may 15 the prime the uh, defense minister told the parliament that yes we are buying s400 and if you remember the brics summit 15 16th october 2016 this deal was inked between the two uh, leaders that is how the deal has now come about so okay. this is the basic idea of how this thing has come about okay so that is not This is not that, a normal system. This is not a clear system. It is that's, a system that's, 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 that's a wonderful, uh, you know, a timeline uh, sum up, uh, Jan Sekhar. And I'll come back to you on uh, the features aspect. Uh, you you touched upon some of them and the importance. Also, you pointed out very clearly. But let me bring in, uh, uh, you know, Abhim Shrivastava here as well. Abhim Shrivastava, why S four hundred for India? As in, in terms of uh, you know, uh, different uh, air defense missile systems, there are other options as well. so uh, vishal uh, allow me to take some time on explaining two contexts which are very important to understand why s400 we may call a game changer and i think it's definitely a game changer it has been so endorsed by the economists uh, general some time back and also by cipri that is one of the most advanced missile systems in the world what does it provide you very quickly it provides you uh you know mobility when it was assessed that how surface to air missile systems are going to be very important we talk about the strategic missile systems we have but in case of a tactical war when you are confronting a threat from the enemy of a, a aerial kind this is one system which can handle all kind of aerodynamic targets right from drones until the stealth aircraft that means you are now going to contain or confront in current context let's say if you take the chinese front you have j10 j11 j16 and j20 which is a stealth fighter which is nicknamed as black eagle and their wing loon to the drone which is a combat drone all that combined you can take care of through one single system which is s and this system provides you two major abilities that is one is the deployment flexibility it can move and deploy itself in just 5 minutes Mm-hmm. if i need to compare it with another matching system which can, can be patriot to very close to it but patriot has is much lesser in features as this say, uh, system is concerned that takes 25 minutes from readiness to bring it to standby from total static thing it just take 3 minutes and from standby to readiness it just takes 35 seconds this is some kind of agility for this kind of system is actually very very brilliant you take another course the another thing is one system provides you multi layer defense it can base targets at 40 kilometers 120 kilometers 
250 kilometers and 400 kilometers. That kind of agility we don't have. Otherwise, we need to deploy systems and other air defense on the air defense grid, which takes care of various ranges. So in one system, with this kind of phenomenal mobility, you have this going on. Let me explain the other context, the geopolitical context. Why the system becomes very important, and in the backdrop, you must keep Brahmos also in mind, because that's mm -hmm. the offensive weapons. So if you take the geopolitical context, you see how China is going to, you know, is expanding its footprints and whatever it perceives as its, whether on the South China Sea, whether on, on the dark side, or in Galwan Valley, Valley or on uh, near Arunachal Pradesh, it thinks certain things, or Taiwan, or Hong Kong, or Malaysia. You see the in events which have happened in recent past. China is trying to flex its muscles and say that what is the grand China vision? And for that, you must get into the mind of its leader. Uh, very recently, that disaster is the crucible for you to build what you want to build and realize your dreams. You ought to see this in the backdrop of COVID-19, in the backdrop of cyber attack on Australia, in the backdrop of what they did. China even, you know, kind of nailed or one P-8 anti-submarine aircraft, which was flying in international airspace over South China Sea, the American Navy aircraft. It has that ability. It sunk one of the Thai Vietnamese fishing vessel very recently. It went into Malaysian uh, exclusive uh, economic zone in South China Sea looking mm -hmm. for uh, oil. All these things which are happening around, they give an impression that there is an emergent China which thinks that it needs to flex its power, which, has, which it has obtained in over four decades. It needs to bring home that either you become like Bangladesh, like Pakistan, like Sri, Sri Lanka, like Nepal, or you need to confront or see the muscle of China. In the okay. context of South Asian region, we have India as one of the point, and I must say here that our response to Galwan violence has been very matching. And just to assure you that I have done some kind of research as far as China's ground forces are concerned. We are already well matched in terms of troop strength, in terms of tanks, in terms of mobility, agility. In terms of the aerial threat, we are well matched because we have placed, we also have along the border of Himalayan border, we got several okay. major bases and in ALGs operating. Okay. Also, in Arunachal Pradesh, we have our uh, you know, Brahmos position. So if we take all that picture, India can give the matching response. It is very capable. And with the induction of S-400, early induction will give us real good results. We will be in a much better platform to challenge and to contain China, which needs to be done in this kind of scenario, what is developing now on the international stage. Okay, uh, definitely uh, what you're pointing out there uh, seems to be indicating that S-400 Triumph will give us that edge, uh, which is uh, very much required in this uh, current geopolitical scenario. Ajay, your views on the S-400 Triumph, uh, you know, uh, air defense system, and obviously the current geopolitical scenario as well, the way both uh, the gentleman, John Saxena, and uh, A.B. Shivastwa is pointing out in terms of features, uh, timeline, and uh, the geopolitical scenario. See, uh, my friends on the panel have already listed out what the S-400 is. I will just add one more thing. The S-400 can also target nuclear missiles. Besides the aircraft, the drones, everything, it can also bring down nuclear missiles. It can, it can send out multiple, uh, uh, it can track around 300 targets or 400 kilometers and also send out multiple uh, projectiles to bring down those targets. That is the kind of ability it has. Now we talk of the geopolitical scenario. We shall, first of all, keep in mind when this contract was signed, when we announced that we are taking the S-400, America was threatening to impose cuts up, sanctions against Russia, and was telling us, do not take it. Now, this was an tacit diplomacy. I would raise it going back into three or four years. When we signed the, one of the agreements to the Russians, I think it was the communication, the CSMO was signed, communication and was signed to the Russians. And two months down the line, we signed and announced the S-400. 
So we had balanced our equation with the US and the Russians. It was very clear we had told the Americans that we cannot we cannot disengage with Russia. I still remember uh, defense minister, the then defense minister, and the then foreign minister very categorically, and the now now uh, sorry the now foreign minister who was in the foreign secretary categorically clarifying that our relations with the Russians cannot change. We have taken it for self-defense, and American sanctions do not hold. America tried a couple of times. Matters went to the Congress, but still our diplomacy won that in the background. That is one aspect we should always remember in diplomacy. It was a major strategic victory for us when we defied the set of CAPSA sanctions against us and Russia and went ahead with the deal. S-400 definitely is a game changer because I see, just to give a ground picture what I gather from uh, people at the post is, if an S-400 system is deployed at Jalanda, it can track targets over Peshawar in Pakistan and also in the current scenario over the Otan Air Base in, uh, in, uh, in China and also the Nikari Air Base, main Air Base facing Ladakh. So you can know the kind of scenario it can once it is deployed. It's not at the moment deployed, we don't have it, but uh, the minister has gone to Russia and has spoken about the S-400. What we learn from media reports of the from Moscow is that Russia has had to take some time because of the COVID crisis. They have some issue of work lines and their, their workforce not coming into work because of COVID that is the international pandemic. We all know that that is the problem. But otherwise, uh, Mr. Rajnath Singh made a very vital statement in Russia. This, this statement was delivered live on the Twitter handle of the University of Russia, where Mr. Singh said, the defense minister said, that uh, all our proposals were taken positively by the Russians. Now, this shall, in diplomatic language, to me as covering MOD for almost two decades now, means everything for these two Russians was uh, Mr. Rajnath had a very, very vital meeting with the Deputy Prime Minister of Russia. The Defense Secretary, our Defense Secretary, Dr. Ajit Kumar, met his part over the separate meeting. And these meetings were almost one day before the victory day parade. The victory parade, I must remind you, was on June 24th in Red Square, Moscow. And before that, one day was spent, the June 23rd was spent just on these meetings and what is to be done. Because we have a long list of things to be purchased on the Russians. And the Russians have been uh, very, 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 I would say, I would not use the word grateful, but have been acknowledging our, our aspect of defying Katsa sanctions and going ahead with the S-400 team. That is the way we deal with the Shah. Okay, and so in terms of uh, you know uh, delivery timelines and all that, how does that translate? You know this particular visit uh, uh, of, of defense minister and uh, the delay which was happening due to uh, COVID nineteen scenario and the current geopolitical situation. How do you look at the entire situation? What can we expect in terms of delivery timelines? See, twenty twenty one is the timeline we are told for S four hundred. Maybe maybe push back by a couple of months, but Mr. Rajnath Singh again said that the Russians have promised him that they will advance some timelines. Because Russians can always do it. They have that expertise. They have that long 70, 80 year old defense manufacturing base, which they can push in additional manpower to a certain project and get it finished. Because it is all about skill sets. They have those skill sets available. Uh, so they have promised to the Indian delegation that some of those things will be advanced. The contract, all contracts will be met, and some of those contracts will be also advanced. This is the promise the Russians have given our defense minister on the 23rd of June, just two days ago. Now, okay. with regard to timelines of S-400, I would say that let this team come back from there. Media reports are saying 2021, push back by two, three months. That is all we shall. Okay, okay. Jan Saxena, your views on, on, the, on the geopolitical scenario out there, as uh, AVM Shrivas was pointing out, uh, you know, how this would become a game changer for uh, India, uh, specifically in the overall geopolitical scenario here, right now, which is playing out? This game changer word is becoming very common with everybody as also as 400. But uh, uh, let us just analyze that how this one become will become a game changer. We have to look at the air defense system, air defense and anti-missile system as 400. Now, this is not a system which has evolved yesterday. It is a system which evolved, started evolving from 1978-79 when the Russians started to talk about the long-range surface to air missiles for their strategic VAs and BP. Over a period of time, three verticals of the system developed. That is P vertical, V vertical, and F vertical. P for Army, V for Mechanized Forces, and F for the Navy. Now, if you look at any system of the air defense variety, you have to look at three arms of it. One is sensors, one is shooters, and one is battle management and control system. Now, as to the sensors of S-400, you will be surprised that 
this has it started developing in different form there used to be an a uh, three different types of radars one looking at medium and high altitude called 36d6 one looking at low altitude which is 76m6 and one was specifically designed for ballistic missiles so this is the first era three different radars one looking at medium altitude low altitude ballistic missile then the system combined the thing and made a all altitude radar called 64 and 6 all altitude medium mm -hmm. low and ballistic missile then they came out with another radar in this scenario that we can do what it can do it can do 3d panoramic view that means provisions a 3d view so as okay. far the sensor okay. sensors is concerned a sensor with a capability of 600 kilometers can get can track 300 targets at a time and engage 36 targets at any one time looking at all the altitudes together that is altitude of medium and high low and ballistic missile and stealthy target this is the mm -hmm. strength this sensors only no sensors no talk of the shooters now very particularly and peculiar of this system this is one weapon where a single platform can launch multiple missiles and missiles of 96m e1 e2 variety of 40 to 120 km range then there are other missiles which are 250 to 400 now now ranges are not that important what is more important is how these missiles have been geared and protected in their guidance and navigation system now in air defense there are different types of navigation system one is called the cross navigation which is command to line of sight that means mm -hmm. you look at the aircraft you look at the missile correct the two the first two missiles belong to the cross variety the other the other missile 46 10 650 km belongs to a different variety what is that the radar looks at the target the reflected waves come back to the ground and the ground directs ground directs the missile so that the aircraft does not know where the missile is coming from and the fourth which is the 40 and 6 400 km range is a active seeker what does it mean missile is guided to a point and from there its active seeker takes on the target and guides itself to the target now this sort of a different type of survivability different type of ranges from a single bread now come okay. to battle management battle management and control now we have 76% of our inventory 68% throughout the indian army 76% for the ground based air defense is russian so it has been checked out and it has been confirmed that this system battle management and control system which is fully automated capable of generating the recognized air situation picture will merge into our afnet scenario of your integrated air command and control system merging the three together okay. now we talked about the sensor shooters and battle management comes the most important question why game changer why game changer now mm -hmm. today a ground based air defense scenario you have guns of the range, guns and very short range air defense missiles of the range from 5 km or 3 to 4 km to 6 to 8 km today we have short range surface to air missiles 20 to 30 km today you have the medium range missiles of 60 to 70 60 to 72 km can go up to 100 km today you have long range missiles only now in the test phase more than 100 now look at this weapon bringing in a capability from 40 km to 400 km a radar which can look at 400 km 300 target 36 can be uh, targeted and a ballistic missiles of the range of 4800 km okay Now the critical establishment realized that our own ballistic missile defense system is not adequate to protect everything that we want to protect what we want to protect large mm -hmm. areas ground seats of power and in the current geopolitical situation suppose the threat builds up from the ladakh side from the tibet autonomous region side from the arunachal pradesh side where is that sort of a sensors which can look that deep which can take on all sorts of threat from aircrafts to ballistic missiles and which can carry or multiple missiles now this is not a system which will come and stand like a, a single ton it will be meshed and matched now if you were to deploy five regiments are coming each regiment has got four eight launcher each launcher uh, uh, has got 32 total 32 missiles will come so there okay. those many okay. missiles imagine those launchers and missiles even three radars deployed along the china border from aksai chin to arunachal pradesh can cover the entire sector look at the capability and mm -hmm. with this capability with this capability will be meshed with the capability of the air defense in the air and the ground Now, for example our own bmd system our own missile system qr sam akash and so on now a more important thing which has to be understood now is the timeline 
when this contract was signed on 15-16 October 2016, the timeline was 2020. That is 36 months from October 16 brings us to December 19 or beginning of January 20. So it okay. was said that it was 2020 to 2024, the five regiments will be delivered 24 months after 24 months after like that it is. But now, because of the COVID-19, Russia has clubbed our supplies with other countries and pushed it to December 2021. Our defense minister, which has gone there, has said that, look, we had promised 2020 to 2024, you are not taking it to December 2021. We require the census. My sense is that should the push come to the shovel, there might be a uh, emergent deployment of certain system, not out of our contract, but even given because Elmas Ante, uh, Vice President, has clearly said that we have in stock both the sensors, the shooters, and the battle management system. Some of them could be deployed in an emergent mode. This is nobody is saying it now because at the present moment, everybody is talking on December 2021. The okay. present. Uh the present first visit of the defense minister out of COVID into that country was to keeping in mind the eyes and ears which this system can provide and also it can give the fillip to the air defense capacity. Definitely, definitely. Okay. definitely. Uh, Jal, 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 that's, that's, that's a very important and significant point out there in terms of uh, you know understanding why it is a game changer and uh, it's, it's because of the capabilities S-400 has. Uh, uh, we're running short of time, but let's take quick concluding comments from AVM Srivastava and Ajay here as well. Uh, uh, AVM Srivastava, let's begin with you. Uh, quickly, if you could sum it up in uh, one minute or so. So, uh, essentially, I would like to say, uh, Vishal, for the audience, for one thing, that with our capabilities, because this must be very uppermost in these times uh, with all citizens, that with our capabilities, which are there with the Indian Air Force, uh, in terms of Brahmos and other air defense missile systems, which are on ground already, we are very well covered. With this, we have another file, very effective, and as Ajay has brought out, which I missed the point initially to highlight, is that it also takes care of ballistic missiles. If you take that scenario, also it takes care of saturation rates because it can track 300 targets in one go and engage 72 targets for fertility. Another thing which I must highlight here is that this system's probability as compared to its nearest uh, competitor, that is Patriot, this uh, two missiles can take care of even a small drone, a stealth aircraft, where in Patriot, you may need as much as three to four missiles. And here, two missiles can be guided to the same target in one go, dynamically. So with that salvo launch, probability of hit goes almost near 100%. And that is one thing which we need to have on our side in case of any conflict. I'm not predicting the conflict, but what I'm saying, in case the balloon goes up, what we say, we must match our ground strength, our air strength, our air defense strength, our capability to strike their VAVPs, if they're trying to strike our VAVPs, we must be able to defend it. That's okay. where this system falls in with its capabilities. Okay, okay. We have to be prepared and ready there as well. Ajay, your concluding comments here. See, the point is when we talk of the cost of the system, I must bring out for your viewers, it is around 39,000 crore rupees. This is the biggest ever deal we have signed, a single deal with the Russians, which is bigger than anything else we have done with them so far till date. And our ties with the Russians and also the previous USSR or Moscow go back to 1960s. In these almost 60 years, we have done this the biggest deal ever. So the importance of the missile has already been told by Shirvastav Sir and Sukhana Sir. Uh, see how it brings it, because I see that this we may need it more number of these missiles because of a two-front war scenario which, may, which we may face anytime now. Because what has happened with China in the LAC at the moment is happening. Anytime the Western Front would also flare up. But when this missile comes in, possibly we need to assess, the experts need to assess, do we need more number of these missiles for a two-front, joint two-front warfare which you face from Pakistan and China simultaneously? Because today our geopolitical scenario around us is changing very, very rapidly. Because okay. China is today investing heavily into these countries which neighbor us. So time will tell how things pan out, Vishal. 
Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ajay, out there, uh, General Saxena and okay. AVM Shivastwa as well for uh, uh, sharing uh, sharing your views here with us. Uh, uh, we uh, definitely will come back again uh, next week with a different topic. But as our panelists pointed out, this is the reason why S400 is considered to be a game changer. The timelines might vary a little bit depending upon the arrangements between both the governments and due to the COVID uh, pandemic scenario as well. But the capabilities undoubtedly make S400.